my name is Amy Lee's Brighter, and welcome to Kicked, an examination of the wacky, wild, and wonderful world of gaming on Kickstarter. To tell you a little bit about the show, since this is our first episode, we're going to be examining a whole bunch of different projects, probably ones you haven't heard of yet, and kind of give you an opportunity to learn a little bit more about some of the projects out there. We're focusing on games that you're still going to have a chance to fund, so we're, if you have a suggestion for a game I should cover, make sure that it's going to be uh, wrapping up in the next week or two. That way, people who get to find out about it can still go back it if they're interested. This week, we're going to start things off with four different games. To start things off, we're taking a look at Kingdom. This is a minimalist simulation game where you essentially get to play the ruler of the local kingdom. You start off in just a small little farming community. You can choose people to fight as well as farm, so you can kind of both protect and produce. And uh, they're aiming to use this Kickstarter to expand upon the game as well as make a few improvements. The game already has a functional version. Uh, you can actually play it through the site. They give you a chance to test it out before you buy, which is not always true of every Kickstarter. Um, but they're hoping to fix out the AI, kind of uh, flush that out a little bit more, make it work a little better, as well as add a few new areas that you'll be able to explore as the playable character. It has 13 days left to go, and it's only funded about 36 hundred dollars out of its eight thousand dollar funding goal. So if you want to help this one out, you better get on that in the near future. Our next game is called Shyness, and it's being produced by a French company, um, and it actually has a very unique language. I originally was watching the trailer trying to figure out what exactly they're speaking, but it turns out that the developers have created their own language for the entire game to be played in. Yes, there are subtitles, don't worry, but if you like fictional languages, you might want to give this one a look at. It's a cross between an RPG and a fighting game, so it kind of has some of the traditional uh, RPG elements where you're leveling up and learning about different skills, and you have a five-person party, so you're going to be switching out and figuring who works for each situation. But the combat style is based on a fighting game, so you're going to be trying to execute combos. Um, if you look at the fighting game screen that they uh, show, you'll very clearly see the normal fighting game setup, you on one side the other guy on the other, you've got your meter bars, health bars, such things like that. Uh, the creative director of the game has actually had this idea for about 20 years, um, so they've taken their time in letting it kind of flesh out and uh, grow over the years. And man, some of the ideas that I've had in 20 years, maybe I'll actually get around to writing that great American novel. Um, they also have a very manga-inspired style, uh, very, uh, very different kind of character models, a couple different races that you can play. Um, and it's already greenlit on Steam, so if this game gets produced, they're in a pretty good shop to get it out there. Uh, it has 15 days left to go, and they've currently uh, only funded about $85,000. Their goal is to get $100,000, and at that point they'll be releasing both Mac and PC versions of the game. Next up is Buck, and the actual game is titled as Buck, A Story About a Real Dog. Which was a little confusing because the character models looked like this. So, what does it have to do about a real dog? I was scratching my head a little bit when I first saw it, because they're wearing clothes, they're bipedal, but it turns out that every single character in the game is actually based on the actual real-life pets of the game's creators. So, you actually, at certain funding levels, can add your own dog into the game as well. Uh, it, the characters, since they're based on the characters, uh, the creators' pets, sometimes take their personalities off of their inspirational uh, inspirations, but this isn't always true. Uh, you're essentially playing as Buck, who is a um, character uh, who's searching for his girlfriend, again, based on another uh, pet of the development team. And it's a 2D Metroidvania style beat em up. So you're going to be running around crafting items. The title character is a mechanic by trade, so you'll be crafting items, uh, different weapons that you're going to be able to use, so it'll be kind of interesting to see how that progresses. This one is probably one of the shortest ones on our list, it's got five days left to go, and they've only funded about $13,000 out of their wanted $75,000. So fingers crossed for you guys, um, and if you're interested, I definitely get on helping them out. Our final game this week is Loading Human. This is going to be an Oculus Rift game, so definitely developed for virtual reality, and it's very much like those point-and-click adventure pro puzzles um, they 
you know, pay homage to Monkey Island, but instead it's going to be in a fully virtual world, so you'll be able to pick up and examine objects um, using the motion sensing tools that you'll be using with this game. Uh, very kind of interesting to look at, they show a couple demos and you can see how things will be able to be examined by you. Um, and you're reliving the story through memories, it's kind of a futuristic sci-fi thing going on. Um, you're basically the son of a very wealthy man who is on a quest to retrieve this object from space, so you're going through all your training, but a woman gets involved, and suddenly that doesn't seem like quite what you wanted to do, you've essentially been bred for this task. Um, but you're going to be able to directly interact with the objects, which makes some pretty cool things. This one is definitely on the block to get uh, completed. We have 13 days left to go, and they have $29,000 already funded. They're aiming for $30,000. So most likely this one's going to hit the mark, and you can expect it in the near future. They're also a member of Kicking It Forward. Now, I didn't know what Kicking It Forward is, but I think this is kind of an interesting thing. Basically, these are Kickstarters who are pledging to donate 5% of their profits um, to other Kickstarters. So say you funded your game on Kickstarter, it becomes successful and that's awesome, good for you. What you basically are saying, you know, I want to pay it forward and take some of the profits that I've made and help other Kickstarters realize their dreams. They are not, uh, they do not have to pick and choose what Kickstarters they're going to fund. They basically just make this pledge that, hey, if we do well, we'll help out other people, which I think is a really cool idea. Well, that's all I have for this week. I'll keep you posted on how these projects do, and I'll have a whole new batch of Kickstarter projects for you next week. If you are interested in any of these projects, maybe something caught your eye, you can find links to all of their Kickstarter pages below, and also leave me a comment to let me know if you liked something I had to talk about. I'll try to feature similar projects in the future. Also, if you have a Kickstarter project that you would like to see funded and you would like to see a little extra attention paid to it, uh, shoot me a message on Twitter. Um, I'm at AE Brighter, or again, leave a comment below and I'll try to fill them in, fill my audience in in the future. Um, and you can also follow Invisible Gamer, that's the group I work with, uh, on Twitter and Facebook. And again, links below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.